Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And wow, <laughs> it has been quite a volatile day. We saw this big 12% swing down with XRP. But at the same time, uh, BTC had that same big red candle. So there is still a correlation. I'm going to look at some big change that's occurring in grayscale today for this video. And I think you're going to find it very interesting. But don't worry if you're not a swing trader, because swing traders love this up or down. They don't care which way it goes as long as there's price action. But I know for the hodlers, these big swings can be quite a nail biter. So just take a look at the candle too with BTC. Yeah, it happened basically at the same time and at the same amount. So it does show you that they are still very correlated. And having a look at Crypto Compare for XRP, South Korea in terms of currency, by volume for XRP is really dominating. They have 12% of that global trading. And for the BTC XRP volume by exchange, it looks like Binance has the lion's share. And of course, let's not forget to just take a peek at Fiat Leap. This is a slice of activity. And I say just a slice because they don't have all the IAP APIs for the majority of exchanges. So you, when you're looking at this, it's just representing the pulse. And the pulse tells us that there's a lot of trading going on right now. Bitcoin is maintaining about a 60% dominance with a market cap that is still very small, only 337 billion. That's just a third of what it was during the last big bull run. So I want to see that get back up to close to a trillion as we saw that in 2017. XRP did take that third position over Tether by almost 3 billion. Yeah, it doesn't really matter to me because it's not a comparable project. It's not like comparing apples to apples. So I really don't care where Tether is in the market cap, but for some people, I guess that does make a difference. Now I wanna talk about Grayscale. Grayscale put out this new toolkit. It's a resource for financial advisors, which by the way, they interviewed these financial advisors and 67% of them are not in the cryptocurrency space. That is amazing to me how many are late to this party. Can you imagine being a financial advisor and not having any digital currency? I just really can't believe it. Well, this currency um, toolkit has 22 pages. And in the 22 pages, it's pretty much only talking about BTC, which this, again, if you're in a position to educate, I just can't believe that the focus would be so narrow. It's very generic, and I understand that they are positioning themselves in front of an audience that doesn't have any education at all, and they're trying to make it simple so that they can dip their toe in the water. But come on, guys, to only talk about BTC, there is a tremendous amount of interesting projects in the top 20, for example, many of which are worthy of a mention. So it just feels like this BTC centric talk is uh, looking at the world in just way too much of a narrow view, which is what I very often refer to as being a frog in the well. So this firm, the, uh, the group Grayscale, they have um, this one fund, this large cap fund, and the composition is pretty much weighted in Bitcoin and Ethereum. They actually reduced their position with XRP, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin recently. Uh, XRP what went from 5% to 3.6% as of June 30th. However, there is a big change in the last 24 hours. We saw that Grayscale doubled its investment in XRP, and they did so with what they have. Uh, it's called the Grayscale XRP Trust. So this is the shot taken on July 30th, 2020. They had 3.7 million in that particular product. Now let's just take a look at August 1st. August 1st, it is up. 
million. So they are paying attention, which is good. I hope that their narrative changes because on the 28th of July, they produced a webinar that goes for about one hour and all they talk about is Bitcoin as an investment. So I know they're anticipating this 68 trillion that's going to be passed down to the next generation soon. And they're trying to prepare those advisors to bring some of that money into the crypto market. Um, but you just can't talk only about Bitcoin. It's just not doing, it's not being fair to the person who you are advising for your, um, for your purpose of being an expert. It's just not, it's just unbelievable to me that you wouldn't have a wider spectrum of focus. And I'm not saying that you have to make recommendations in all the top 20 projects that are in the crypto space, but you must be aware of those other 20 projects and you must be able to talk intelligently about all of them, not just the one. That is what a real good advisor would do. And I just want to point out one other thing. This is the Bitcoin chart on a sentiment uh, tool where we can see here is the price in green of BTC. And these are the Twitter followers and how it is trending on Twitter, totally in a decline. And you compare that to Ripple, which has this price movement here, yet on Twitter, it has just been going up, 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 up. And in that podcast that I talked about, they um, specifically talk about how to stay up on this space from the 52 minute mark to the 54 minute mark, it says that you must be on Twitter because if you're not on Twitter, you're gonna totally miss what's happening. Well, you can be on Twitter, but if you're not following a wide spectrum on Twitter, it kind of defeats the purpose. And the person who was claiming to say that you must be on Twitter, I went and took a look at who he is following. And I can tell you, it was very, very narrow. So give yourself this really critical thought here. If you could only follow 10 people on Twitter or 10 sources on Twitter, who would that be? I'm going to give it a lot of thought. I'm going to put my 10 in my journal tonight because I can tell you for sure it's going to be the widest spectrum you could ever see. And I'm going to follow that up with some fluff. So unfortunately, this, this picture has gone viral. It was taken from the tournament yesterday when one of the wrestlers, who is 373 pounds, got thrown out of the ring and landed right on top of a judge. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> And all of the comments that are going with this viral picture are pretty, pretty funny. But we're going to stick with this portion of why it's important to have a wide spectrum. And I'm not just talking crypto. I'm going to talk a little bit about music. This is Hikaru Utada, and she is one of the most popular J-pop stars in Japan. She was born in New York. She's born of very two famous parents. Her dad is a famous music producer and her mom, who has since passed away, was a very famous Anka singer. And her Anka is one part of your musical background that I want to introduce to you. But if you are interested in hearing what the new contemporary J-pop sound with a little bit of a R&B style, I'm going to also include her video that she produced from her apartment in London with two friends. So just three of them, all three girls produced this music video and they did it in the apartment, which kind of tells me it's just, it's so good. And just tells me again, um, our new norm of, uh, do we really need to have these fancy music studios? I don't think so. So this is uh, a picture of her 
Now, this is a video of her mom. Her mom was really a beautiful singer. And she does this style in Japan that's called Anka. And it is very much like a cross between blues and country and Western. If you had to compare it to any music style from the West, I personally love it. And some of it even has a really great sound. This is my favorite Enka singer, Yoko Nagayama. I'm going to put her link in the description below. But I got to thinking, in terms of music, one of the most beautiful sounds is the instrument called a koto from Japan. It originally came from China, but was introduced to Japan in the 7th century. Um, depending on the instrument uh, that you find based on age and origin, it can have five strings up to 13 strings. The koto in Japan today is mostly a 13 string uh, instrument. But when it comes to background music, I think this is one of the best sounds you can listen to. And so I'm going to put this particular video in the description below so that you can listen to it. And again, the point is to broaden not only the people you follow on Twitter, but to also broaden your spectrum of music that you listen to. All right, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.